The main teaching, I think, if you say like a um, sutra, like a tantra, and like a dzogchen, the perf uh, great perfection teaching, they're very, very similar. And probably also, you know, some of the historians might say there's influences between back and forth from each other. But today's, the way the form of Bhyan is very similar to Buddhist because there's influence back and forth from each other. So it's a, as far as a basic principles of believing um, karma, reincarnation, uh, enlightenment, uh, they are just a really like the same. There's not much of differences. Main differences is, I think, uh, Bhun, as as a indigenous tradition, uh, it has a lot of uh, what we call causal vehicle teachings. Uh, the teachings related with the nature, teachings related with the spirit of the natures, a uh, lot of different forms of healing practices, and also I think people believe that the Tibetan whole knowledge of Tibetan medicine and astrology, there are also many of them are uh, comes from the Bhyan tradition. And so there are a lot of uh, practices related with the, that aspect. Nat nature and element practices are very earthy, very environmental, ecological, as ecological spiritual type of practices are very much a kind of, I think is a very unique unique, but which has now um, part of, became like a Tibetan culture, you know, like a, a usage, usage of prayer flags, uh, making uh, smoke offerings. Um, so there are many, many Tibetan culture related uh, practices and rituals are very important part of the Tibetan culture. And I think it's very important to understand it also is very important and to preserve that is a very valuable thing to have in, in Tibetan tradition. So that these are all, I think, originally coming from, from the Bhun. Every time in history, a new religion, new idea, new philosophy, comes in the place where already long standing of history, tradition, wisdom, already there, it's always difficult to, to take place, to root there. So this is always, I think, it's, it's a struggle. I think that's the primary reason why uh, there were a conflict, because it's new religion trying to come in and all having resistance to it, you know? I think that seems like a kind of um, normal uh, process, but it is not that one is better than the other one. It's more that one is already there and one is new and it's adapting, it's a, a process of conflict, resolving conflicts, you know? And uh, now, uh, the, both in Tibet and in exile, the relationship are much more improving, uh, especially uh, now many years now, His Holiness uh, Dalai Lama has accepted the Bhyan as a fifth major spiritual tradition of Tibet. So uh, every official gathering, meeting, reunion, our His Holiness Lung Dote Binyi Marambuche is always present with His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and there's not uh, much of conflicts there. It's like a lot of harmony in between different traditions, and, and more and more so now. Well, my teachers, uh, His Holiness Lungto Tembe Nyema Rinpoche and Yonzi Tezi Namda Rinpoche, are really like the two main person in exile who who have 
kept the flame alive and who have bridged the next generation to survive this transmission, knowledge, training. Uh, otherwise, without these two people, and I think uh, it has been really, really difficult. And when I was growing up, my teacher, Yonze Rinpoche, he, he used to talk about it, how difficult it is to, to preserve it, how difficult it is to teach, teach to us, because we were a group of uh, very young and unmature and people. So as to training us was not an easy job <laughs> to preserve the tradition. After 59, when they came to India and then that new generation came in India training, we are the first generation. So to whom they have transmitted now we, this, this generation now is kind of bringing back to Tibet, back into Tolpo area and a new places like in the West. Yeah, there are a number of them. Uh, obviously, historically, like a Mendri Monastery, it's the uh, most important one. And then in Chide uh, which is in Nepal, which was original Chide Norpuce was in Tibet, where actually the seat of Namba Shenrap. And these are like a, a very important monastery, which is in exile right now. And then in, in Tibet, of course, there's the original Mandarin Monastery, original Yunglungling Monastery, and these are historically more imp very important. But as far as, as far as the size is concerned, there are now much more bigger monasteries where like a 700,000 monks like, uh, like that, like in eastern Tibet uh, called Ngawa Nangjik Gyo. So there are many monasteries, but in Tibet, Bion is among all the other schools. Uh, maybe uh, some people say it's like a second largest among five schools. Um, exact number I don't know, but there are more or less maybe we are not that many. So more or less between 20 to 30 uh, uh, teachers coming to the West or living in the West, uh, going back and forth teaching and, you know, and, but we are all, um, those who are doing it, we are very closely connected to each other. And in fact, we are, uh, since last year, uh, at Lingmicha Institute started uh, our reunion of all the masters teaching in the West. And that this year, next month, we are starting in a, another second meeting in California. So we are very closely working together and doing a project of uh, translations of uh, Bern, original Bern text into English and other languages. So Bern tradition in the West, it's, it's in kind of almost everywhere uh, in, in Europe, in Russia, and in the US, and uh, in Europe, many different places. And so it's kind of everywhere. We use uh, uh, a lot of webcast teachings, and we use uh, giving online uh, retreats or workshops. Uh, and the most important thing is we do the webcast, which is we do very regularly, and probably I'm not sure if how many other teachers are doing. There are a number of other teachers are doing, but I think probably we are one of the bigger uh, people, uh, how you say, uh, in terms of the, for example, we have uh, 12 live translations, and I'm not sure how many other teachers who are doing in, uh, webcasts has 12 languages, live translation. And we will be anywhere from uh, 28 to 40 countries any given time. And, uh, and we do also regularly uh, in a way like every month, sometime twice a month, like that webcast, which is free. 
uh, around the world. So we are doing and we are working to do a real lot of more on site, uh, online. I think I'm not saying only burn is important, like every indige indigenous tradition, every original cultures, I think, are very important to understand the human history, to understand human potentiality, uh, and particularly, I think the burn are a very important to understand because this burn has so much uh, profound knowledge. Uh, anywhere, what I say usually, anywhere from raw element, working with the raw element, earth, water, fire, air, space, it's very ecological oriented practices to very psychological oriented to very ultimate liberation, achieving body of light. A bod body of light in, a, in the highest form of teaching in the in Dzogchen, uh, a meditation of Dzogchen is the practices of the nature of mind, practices of inner awareness, inner light, uh, practices of visions, uh, practices with the sunlight, practices with the sky, practices in the going into the dark room, experiencing a lot of visionary experiences. The outcome of that is to achieve a body of light. When you die, your, all your physical body transforms into light, body of light. So that is the ultimate goal. So, uh, so all this knowledge exists in the burn. Therefore, it's very important to preserve it.